I'm Chance Dorland, and this is The Docket, our weekly interview program covering law and crime in San Antonio from ExpressNews.com, brought to you today by the law offices of Pat Maloney. And I'm joined now by my regular guest, San Antonio Express News courts and crime reporter Elizabeth Zavala. This is our last podcast together of 2018, and it turns out Bear County is ending the year without many cases reaching trial that we would have expected to, you know, hit the courtroom earlier this year. We've discussed some of those cases, like the capital case against Otis McCain, accused of killing Officer Ben Marconi, who was gunned down in front of the public safety headquarters back in 2016. We've also discussed some movements in the new murder indictments against convicted killer Janine Jones, who is awaiting results of a psychiatric evaluation, so something we'll probably cover in 2019. And for today's episode, a case we have yet to discuss, the case of Johnny Joe Avalos, who is charged with capital murder of multiple persons in the rapes and murders of four women. So obviously horrendous charges, Elizabeth. Tell me about the case. Yes, uh, it's good to be over here, Chance. I can't believe we're, um, you know, toward the end of the year already. So the Johnny Joe Avalos case, two years ago, the San Antonio man was indicted on capital murder charges, and he is accused in the rape and killing of four women in about a four-month span in San Antonio from 2014 to 2015. And all of these, these women ranged in the ages from 15 to 46. And they are uh, Natalie Chavez, who was 15 years old. Her body was found in December of 2014. Rosemary Bettis, who was 28. She was killed in January 2015. And Celia Lopez, who was 29. And Genevieve Ramirez, 46, both are believed to have died in April 2015. So those are the victims in these horrible murders. Tell me more about the accused, Avalos. Well, Johnny Joe Avalos is in his early 30s. He's, um, you know, he's kind of, he's kind of like an average, average build guy. Actually, if you were uh, to see him, we've, we've run several mugshots of him uh, on mysanantonio.com and on expressnews.com. And, and, you know, just, just looking at him, he, he, he looks like, you know, just a normal guy. Uh, he's been arrested multiple times in Bear County over the years on several charges. Uh, they've ranged from uh, making terroristic threats, criminal mischief, and possession of a controlled substance. So, uh, you know, one could only imagine that these particular charges are, are quite an escalation as to as to what he has um, a record for, uh, you know, doing in the past. Now, these crimes are from several years ago, ranging from December 2014 to April of 2015. Obviously, we're about to now enter 2019. There's been a lot of time since these women, um, unfortunately, you know, lost their lives. And I I believe that there's uh, reportedly been confessions regarding at least some of these uh, crimes. Right. Yes. Um, What we've been able to find out through uh, a lot of really good reporting through um, our website, my, com. Johnny Joe Avalos apparently told Renee Canales, a fellow Bear County jail inmate that he had got Chavez and raped her and killed her. And I believe that was a direct quote. And this was according to an arrest warrant affidavit that was obtained by my and uh, Natalie Chavez's naked body was found under the Veracruz Street Bridge over Apache Creek, which is on the west side uh, of San Antonio in December of 2014. Now, uh, a woman by the name of Veronica Edwards told police that Avalos confessed to killing Lopez while the two were driving to the west side on April 20th of 2015, also um, reported by MySA.com. And 
Lopez's body was found partially unclothed in April 2015 in a vacant lot in the 4400 block of South Presa Street. Now, Ramirez was found alive with trauma injuries in an alley in the 100 block of Avondale in April of 2015, but she died from her injuries two months later. And Fettis's body was found wrapped in a sheet along a sidewalk in the 2100 block of San Fernando Street in January of 2015. Now, you know, uh, you mentioned a really good point. These are some older cases. And, um, but, you know, uh, they have, there's, there are some things that, you know, some details that, you know, can continue coming out on these. And, and as you mentioned, you know, talking about it in the jail, you know, as was reported on these affidavits, you know, um, you know, talking about it in there, it made it out. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. Um, I just I, I have these memories of like growing up watching Law and Order or just like crime movies and stuff. And and you see people depicted in jail talking to each other and then it gets used in court. But of course, that's that's television. But no, this actually happens. It makes you wonder why anyone would say anything when, when they're incarcerated. But these things still do come out, at least allegedly, as, as you've reported for Express News and, and My San Antonio. But speaking of media, you know, it's very interesting. You know, we work for the San Antonio Express News, but obviously there's other media entities in the area. And apparently Avalos spoke to a a television station and and asked them for a very small amount of cash, basically to, to kind of tell them what happened before and after these killings. Tell me about that. Yes, um, apparently Johnny Joe Avalos told a a KENS TV Channel 5 reporter in September of 2015 that he played a role in some of the killings and could tell them, quote, what happened before and, quote, what happened afterwards. But he also told the station that he'd tell them the information for $100. But they declined uh, because they said they do not pay for the news, which we would, you know, do the same thing. You know, we, we, uh, we do not pay for, um, interviews or, or information, but, you know, you do raise a really interesting point about chattiness among, you know, defendants, because not only, you know, will they at times talk to, you know, TV stations, cause you know, we're all going to go to, um, the jail or we're going to go to, you know, what we call a perp walk where, you know, the defendant is, is, you know, escorted to the magistrate to be, you know, arraigned. And many times when you stand outside at a perp walk waiting, you know, to get a glimpse of the defendant, um, we will ask questions. And sometimes, you know, most of the time you will get absolutely nothing from people or you'll get, you know, uh, declarations that, you know, oh, I didn't do it or it was somebody else. But sometimes you will get exactly what you don't expect. You know, it could be a confession and, uh, you know, or, you know, someone else implicated in the crime. But what's interesting about that chance is that that a lot of times when the defendants are very chatty like this, uh, you fast forward to trial coverage and a lot of these, um, you know, interviews and and B-roll that they call from from, – TV stations will be run in court and and you get to see uh, what the defendant had to say at the time of their arrest. Yeah, it's very interesting. I I agree with you. Most of the time that that walk is usually just reporters, you know, shouting, why did you do it? And then like dead silence. But then you have the clicking of shutters from cameras. That's that that sound of just like, you know, hundreds of of (laughs) sounding like as if hundreds of photos are being taken at once. But you're absolutely right. You know, cases we've discussed here on the podcast, um, people have talked back and and said things. And I've included those in some of the reports that I've done um, Monday through Friday, the Express Briefing podcast. You can check out all of our podcasts at expressnews.com slash podcasts. 
But back to this case, Elizabeth, as I mentioned earlier, you know, these really unfortunate crimes took place in, in 2014 and in 2015. So, of course, you know, a big question I have, what has the holdup been and, and what's the status now? It's, it's obviously been several years. Right. Well, you know, one of the things that um, we've discussed, um, you know, a, a lot about and, and when you really get to in, like in my role as a courts reporter, I, I get used to looking at, you know, how many years have passed on different cases as I keep track of them, just trying to do, you know, to get into that ballpark figure as to when they might show up in court. Now, in this particular case, the, the multiple capital murder of multiple persons that also has a sexual assault um, component to each one. Uh, early on, Bear County prosecutors said that they would seek the death penalty against Don, Johnny Joe Avalos. Um, and, and if he's convicted in the state of Texas, um, that uh, with the DA's office seeking the death penalty, that would be, uh, you know, likely, an, you know, an automatic thing where uh, if they're seeking death, you know, you don't actually have, you know, a punishment phase unless there's unless there's there's some extenuating circumstances that have to do likely with what is going on right now. And what is going on right now is that we are awaiting the results of a psychiatric evaluation to see if Johnny Joe Avalos is sane and competent to stand trial. So if and when he is tried, those proceedings would be heard by Judge Lori Valenzuela who is the judge of the 437th State District Court. You're listening to The Docket, a new weekly interview program covering law and crime in San Antonio from ExpressNews.com, brought to you by our sponsor, the law offices of Pat Maloney. Now, we've talked about these psychiatric evaluations, like, for instance, in the, uh, in the case of Janine Jones, which you'll recall, she has five new um, murder indictments from the 1980s, where she's accused of killing five Bear County infants by uh, allegedly injecting them with, a, with muscle relaxers or seizure medications. So one of those, uh, this also is one of those cases that we thought we would be seeing this year, but um, we are not because Janine Jones also is awaiting a psychiatric evaluation to she to see if she is sane and competent to stand trial. She was supposed to stand trial um, according to online court records back in July. So um, right now there seems to be a holding pattern within uh, Bear County as it relates to a couple of different psychiatric evaluations as it relates to several cases. So, you know, um, we likely will be discussing this again in the new year because, um, you know, the before cases against Johnny Joe Avalos, which are, you know, as you said, like, you know, getting to be almost four to five years old, uh, should be coming down the pike. We just need to see what um, what the result will be coming out of the criminal magistrate court, which uh, conducts all of the psychiatric evaluations in Bear County. I want to talk a little bit about Janine Jones before we say goodbye for today's episode. Um, so hopefully we'll get to that here in a moment. But to finish up with uh, Avalos, you know, when you mentioned the the psychiatric evaluation, that wasn't entirely shocking to me. You know, the whole idea of asking a, a television station for $100 for an interview to talk about murders you were involved with, that really made me wonder what, what his mental state was at the time of the killings and, and then currently, and certainly at the time when he tried to talk to that television station. So my question to wrap up, uh, Avalos, do you think that the psychiatric evaluation procedure that they're going through currently that we're waiting for with this case, this is this means there's something there, you think, that this is not just a normal psychiatric evaluation? It seems like they're spending their time on this. 
Well, you know, Chance, these things, since you're dealing with with people's mental health and, you know, with HIPAA laws these days, it's really hard to get that sort of medical information together. But one could, you know, I'm going to go ahead and use the Janine Jones case as an example. Um, Her attorney, Cornelius Cox, tells me that, um, you know, she spent, you know, three decades in prison. She should have spent more time, but because of a new law that passed while she was in prison uh, that was designed to uh, cut down on the population in prisons. She was to be released in March of 2018 this year. But when you bring forth a possibility that someone could have uh, mental health issues in a case like this, you have two sides that have to look at medical records. So you've got the, the, the state, which are the prosecutors, and they have to have their own expert. And then you have the defense, and they have to have their own expert as well. So you can only imagine in the case of Janine Jones, she has been, she was incarcerated for over 30 years in, in, uh, in uh, state prison. And now she's in the Bear County Jail. She has been in Bear County now exactly a year. Uh, She came last December. So I'm going to, you know, assume that um, you're talking about three decades worth of medical records that need to be looked at, not only on the part of, of the defense so that Cornelius Cox can plan his case, but also on the side of the prosecutors, because they are also working on their case as well. So it's probably going to take a little longer than, and say, for instance, um, what's happened in the Avalos case. And, and, and the Avalos case in and of itself is confusing as well because um, Johnny Joe Avalos actually was, I believe, in jail already on other charges when police were able to link him possibly to two other alleged rapes and murders. So all of everything that happens in in these particular cases as they walk up to actual trial coverage takes quite a bit of time. Well, Elizabeth, you actually answered the other question I was going to ask about Janine Jones. So the, that does it there. Um, we do have a little bit of time left. Uh, I, I'd love to know what your thoughts are for the end of 2018 when it comes to court cases in Bear County and then looking forward to uh, 2019. Obviously, very soon there will be a new DA. Yes, Chance, that is that is the big thing that's happening right now um, as as you'll recall, we did discuss some, and I know that you probably spoke to a lot of my colleagues this year about the big change in the DA's office. So um, new Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez is going to be coming in, and he has been, I've heard, forming his team during this holiday season. We've heard that at least 26 assistant district attorneys have either quit or have been let go And, you know, we hear that this is pretty normal at this time when you've got, you know, um, an election where, you know, something, you know, where you actually have a change in the command. Nico LaHood uh, was a one-term district attorney. When he uh, beat Susan Reed four years ago, she had been district attorney for, I believe, 16 years in Bear County. So, um, there was a huge change when Nico went into the Bear County District Attorney's Office. So now that uh, Joe Gonzalez is coming in, uh, there's obviously going to be a change. And, and, you know, we'll be talking some about some of these cases that are going to be coming up. But what we're kind of in the holding pattern right now uh, is because you have new staff coming in. Joe Gonzalez has hired new chiefs. He's hiring, um, or in, in, and in some cases, rehiring some uh, people who used to work for the DA's office a while back. So, you know, um, this is all normal, as I said. And also, judges are moving their chambers around in the Justice Center in both the um, 
Cadena Reeves Justice Center, where criminal and misdemeanor courts are held, and in the Old Bear County Courthouse, where all of your civil cases are held as well. So, you know, I say at this point that we just stay tuned. Uh, jurors won't be coming back into the courthouse until January 7th. So, you know, it's it's all going to be new in the next couple of weeks. And, and hopefully we'll be able to have a little bit of a chat about what, you know, what some of the cases are going to be that we'll be talking about in the new year. And a tremendous thank you to San Antonio Express News Courts and crime reporter Elizabeth Zavala for joining me for today's episode, as well as the entire year of our first year of the Docket Podcast. Our weekly interview program covering law and crime in San Antonio from ExpressNews.com, brought to you by the law offices of Pat Maloney. For the San Antonio Express News, see you in 2019. I'm Chance Dorland. Thank you.